Hello and welcome back to this series on NER and Spacey 3.0, all for digital humanists or anyone who's just generally interested. In the last two videos or so, we've looked at how to kind of get the training data and then use that training data to train a custom named entity recognition model in Spacey 3.0 using the new config file system. In this video, we're gonna take the model that we trained, which if you remember, is stored into our output folder and as model-best and model-last indicating the different stages of the epochs in which they were trained and the best model that was done in that whole training process. In this video, we're going to start taking that data and start using it to, or the model, and start using it to actually test the model and see how well it's performing with some new testing data that I've generated from our samples. This testing data is held out data that I've held out from all of the training data that we had. If you remember, we only selected a small portion for both testing, or sorry, training and validation. In this video, we're gonna be using this formal test.json file, also stored in our data subfolder. So let's go ahead and walk through what we're going to do. In this video, we're going to do an informal test. In the next video, we're gonna take this, the principles of this informal test and use them to structure a formal test to benchmark the models and uh, measure the metrics, different metrics, the models to see which model performs best. And we're going to do that by providing a few different major data points in the formal test, true positives, tr uh, false positives, true negatives, and false negatives. For now, let's focus on just a simple informal test to figure out how we test our data with Spacey 3.0. So what we're going to do is we're going to import Spacey. We're going to import JSON as well. That way we can load in the Spacey. Um, library that we're going to be working with, and we can also load in some JSON data. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to copy and paste in this load data and write data functions that I typically use in most of my scripts. Now what we need to do is we need to load in our uh, formal underscore test dot JSON. So what we're going to do is we're going to create an object. Let's call this test data. We're going to say, make that equal to load underscore data, and we're going to call in this load data function, and we're going to pass in one argument. That's going to be a string, and that's going to be where to find that data that we want to load in. So formal underscore test dot JSON. And let's go ahead and see what this looks like. Let's print off test underscore data, and let's select number 10. And we see that we have a line, looks like it's coming from Wikipedia, but it's got the, just like our training data, it's got the actual uh, sentence followed by all the different entities that are in that sentence. So let's do an informal test. What does an informal test look like? Well, it's a way to just quickly get a sense of how our model's performing with a very small text. So what we wanna do is essentially think of this as eyeballing it. So what we can do now is start doing an informal test. And this informal test is by no means a an appropriate test. We're gonna see an appropriate formal test where we look at all these different metrics in the next video. For now, we just wanna get a sense of how it's performing with some small sample like this sentence right here from Wikipedia. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna create an NLP object and we're gonna make this equal to spacey.load and we're gonna load in the, let's just load in the best model from our training, which is gonna be in the output subfolder. So we're gonna say output slash model dash best. And this is going to load in our spacey model. And then what we need to do is we need to create a doc object from this sentence right here. So we're going to create a doc is equal to NLP. And that's going to be equal or it's going to be one argument test underscore data. We're going to grab 10. And we're going to grab the zero index, which is this sentence right here from Wikipedia. And then we're going to say for int and doc dot ints print off Let's just print off int dot text and we're going to print off int dot label underscore. We're going to run that and we're going to see that we've got one thing here that's looking wrong to me, camps. Um, it's probably catching camps generally. There might be something in the training data where a false positive was just labeled as camps generally. Um, we're going to let that slide for right now. But what we're seeing is uh, Auschwitz, uh, Belzig, uh, Kelmo, um, you um, Yaz Novak, uh, et cetera, on down the list to Treblinka, all being caught as concentration camps. And we can see something happening here, right? We see that Auschwitz is correctly caught. We're seeing Birkenau missed, uh, Beltzek missed, missed, Kelmno missed, et cetera, on down the list. We're seeing a few different things missed. Let's go ahead and try um, running this with test data 30 and see what that looks like. We're going to just rerun this again. 
and we run this and we get that there are two entities here, Dachau and um, Sachsenhausen. And we see that Dachau actually is in, in this um, the sentence, and so is Sachsenhausen. So we're seeing a model that is clearly missing some entities and also uh, uh, grabbing ones that we know to be entities. This is how you kind of perform an informal test. And what this tells me immediately is that as I informed you in the earlier video in the series, there is something seriously, seriously wrong with this training data. We've got certain entities missed and not being labeled in the training data. And I can tell you that just by quickly looking at this. Um, and we also have a problem of um, training data that is probably cr created with one entity, so therefore it's going to be a little overfitted. However, we are going to move forward because, again, like I said a few videos ago, this the whole setup here is not built around creating a soda model. It's built around just getting, getting you the basic steps for how to create and test an NER model in Spacey 3. In a later video, I'm going to show you how to clean up the training data and how to get much better tests out of, or much better models out of this whole process. But in the next video, we're going to learn the basics of how to structure a formal test. That's going to be it for this video. If you've liked it, please like and subscribe down below. And as always, thank you to my Patreon supporters.